Be careful what you wish for, Parker. We're so obsessed with Doc Ock's return, Green Goblin's laugh, and overanalyzing whether that dark shape in the hallway is Lizard or Venom in the No Way Home trailer that we've completely overlooked the film's main villain, Doctor Strange. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Oh, that's right. From what we know so far, it actually looks like Doctor Strange could be the ultimate big bad for Spider-Man No Way Home. How would this work, and why would this actually be a good thing to help with Peter's character arc? Let's get into it right now. Fine. I won't. The first point would point to why Doctor Strange is the bad guy. There's been a lot of chatter surrounding Doctor Strange after the big trailer reveal for Spider-Man No Way Home. Granted, we should take whatever we see in the trailer with a big old grain of salt, because what we see might not be how things unfold on the big screen for the actual movie. But from the narrative that's presented to us in the trailer, there's two big possibilities. With Doctor Strange, and neither of them are good news for our second favorite, goateed, arrogant genius. The first is that Doctor Strange makes a really poor choice. Your powers are quick. You must be popular with children. A young teenager comes knocking on his door, asks him to perform a potentially universe-breaking spell. Wong specifically tells him not to do it before leaving through a portal. Then Doctor Strange gives the least convincing, who me? I would never, answer to Wong, and then immediately performs the spell which goes horribly wrong and practically breaks the multiverse on its own. That's a big mistake to make right there. On one hand, I see all the comments online defending the idea that Strange would totally try this spell because his arrogance and god complex always has him pushing the boundaries for what's possible. If Wong tells him a spell is too complicated and too dangerous, and no one could ever do it successfully, then you bet Doctor Strange would try to perform that spell the first chance he gets. But on the other hand, we don't want to see Doctor Strange make such a simple and arrogant mistake that leads to such disastrous consequences. We saw him grow throughout his first movie away from the overly confident person he was and become a true hero. For all of this to hinge on Doctor Strange being too arrogant would be a tad disappointing. But of course, maybe it leads to something interesting. If this really is Doctor Strange's ultimate fault, then it's his responsibility to try to fix things by any means necessary. We already know that Strange isn't above sacrificing people for the sake of the greater good, so what if him trying to fix his mistake causes him to be at odds with Peter? In this new multiverse-breaking reality, it looks like a few universes will start to bleed together. I could see Doctor Strange being the type of person to only want to protect our universe, even if it means destroying others, and that type of mindset would put him at odds with Peter Parker. Spider-Man would want to find a solution that saves every life, while Doctor Strange is adamant about protecting this world above all others, and it would make for a compelling clash of ideologies between the two heroes. Now that's one possibility, but now let's talk about the other that seems to be making its way around the fandom. Is this really Doctor Strange? Some point to Doctor Strange being so willing to try the spell as evidence that this isn't our Doctor Strange, but actually a villain in disguise. What a twist! This whole storyline of Peter erasing everybody's memory of him being Spider-Man actually has a similar comic storyline, the controversial One More Day, which dealt with Peter making a deal with Mephisto to erase his marriage with Mary Jane in order to save his Aunt May's life. Yes, yes, I know, Mephisto again. Ugh, didn't we already go through this with WandaVision? It's not Mephisto, or is it? No, it's not, or is it? There's a significant shot in the trailer that seems tailor-made to get the fanbase talking, and that's when Peter's walking through the crowd. There's a prominent sign saying, Devil in Disguise. Now come on, Marvel, you're just messing with us now. Would the MCU really be that bold to tease Mephisto again and then not pay it off? I, I mean, probably. But let's consider the alternative, where Mephisto has replaced Doctor Strange and is the one that is successfully warping this reality and bringing all these villains back. Although the Doctor Strange in the trailer suggests the spell they use may have backfired, maybe it did actually what it was supposed to do, and now our whole world is in danger thanks to this Doctor Strange's face wearing Mephisto's actions. So if one way or another Doctor Strange is the ultimate villain of the movie, what would that exactly look like overall? And is there any more evidence that supports this theory? I say, uh, kind of. One of the big set pieces of the trailer is Doctor Strange and Spider-Man on a train in the middle of a desert somewhere. At first, it looks like these two just working together on a mission, but then you start to notice some odd things. For one, Doctor Strange is in a new all-black costume. And we know the universe rule for bad guys is wearing all black. And another thing is that it actually looks like Doctor Strange is attacking Peter. Strange multiplies the train while Peter looks around in confusion, and there's no one else around them that they're fighting. So unless the villain of that scene has been edited out with CGI, which is totally a possibility, then that means Doctor Strange and Peter are fighting for the control of this train, or perhaps to retrieve something on it. Now, because of the darker costume for Strange, maybe this is an alternate universe version of Doctor Strange. That's an exciting possibility too. 
Maybe there's a way to have our Doctor Strange stay a good guy, but still have Doctor Strange be the ultimate villain in some capacity. Maybe as much as our Doctor Strange wants to protect our universe, this ultimate universe Doctor Strange just wants to break it. Remember what He Who Remains said in the Loki finale. While one of his variants was researching and discovering the multiverse, other versions of himself were doing the same thing. So maybe our Doctor Strange isn't completely responsible for the break in the multiverse, but rather, he just gave an opportunity for an evil Doctor Strange to capitalize on the opportunity and use the newly formed Sinister Six in order to cause more damage to the multiverse. And the only one standing in his way, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And you know what? I think this would be an awesome story development because at its core, it benefits Peter's character. You know what I'm most worried about for No Way Home? Is that Tom Holland's Peter Parker is going to be sidelined. This is going to be a huge event movie that not only sees the potential return of six Spider-Man villains from the previous franchises, which include Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Electro, Sandman, and the Lizard, with probably one more to complete the Sinister Six, unless of course the sixth member is the evil Doctor Strange, but it's also going to probably fit in Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire in significant supporting roles. All that nostalgia is great, but again, this should be Tom Holland's movie. I don't want to be too distracted by seeing William Defoe's Green Goblin that I forgot that Tom Holland's Peter Parker needs to have a complete character arc here. Ooh, William Defoe's Green Goblin! So I think a great way for that to happen is to make him fight Doctor Strange as the big bad at the end. Let me explain why. The biggest criticism for the MCU Spider-Man is that he's been defined by his mentors and hasn't really had a chance to figure things out on his own. His first few appearances were all about how he desperately wanted Tony's approval and how he was just a kid who needed mentoring in order to become a mature hero. And then after Endgame, Peter's Far From Home movie was all about him struggling to live up to his legacy of his mentor and what it meant to be his own hero. And just when it seemed like Peter was ready to stand on his own, we got the news that Doctor Strange would play a supporting role in his third movie, which immediately started all the jokes about Peter needing a mentor figure who's played Sherlock Holmes in the past. So in order for Peter to complete this journey he's been on, I think instead of just having Doctor Strange mentor him, it would be better if Peter Parker had to fight him at the end of the movie. Let's go back to my two possibilities that I presented at the beginning. If this actually is an evil Doctor Strange, then Peter fighting him would show how far he's coming as a hero. In this instance, he wouldn't just be a teenager fighting Tony Stark created bad guys, but rather fighting a threat that threatens to destroy the entire multiverse and therefore proving he's one of the greatest heroes in the MCU, though that may be a bit controversial. There are fans who want a more street-level Spider-Man, not some multiverse-saving greatest Avenger hero, so maybe this wouldn't be the best option. But if Doctor Strange is actually a good guy with just a difference in opinion on how to handle the multiverse compared to Peter, which causes them to disagree and fight, then I think that's actually better for Peter's character. It shows that he's no longer just a teenager who listens to whatever mentor he has and goes along with it, but rather he has his own opinions about what's right and wrong, and therefore stands on his own as a hero. He'll fight Doctor Strange if it means ultimately doing the right thing, and I believe that's the best way to show how far this character has come in a movie that threatens to overshadow his character. It would truly be a case of the mentee becoming the mentor, as he shows the arrogant Doctor Strange the error of his ways and convinces him to go along with whatever solution Peter has for the broken multiverse. So yeah, all that sounds pretty great, huh? Let's make Doctor Strange the villain of No Way Home. But with all that out of the way, could anyone point me in the direction of where Doctor Strange purchased his comfy winter wizard wear? Yeah, I'd destroy the multiverse too if it means I could get a hand on that cape. Ooh, just looks cozy. 